I'm about to interview Thomasina Myers, who's the founder of Oaxaca. She is an incredible woman who I had the pleasure of interviewing about a year and a bit ago now for Conversations of Inspiration Live, the podcast in London. And it was just one of those most amazing moments. I've since been a firm fan and friend of hers. Um, and she, as we all know, is a wonderful restaurant owner. She's an author. She's winner of MasterChef and TV and a TV presenter and she's just this all-round incredible human being who I know will share with us the honest truths about the roller coaster that she's been through during this pandemic meaning that she's had to close restaurants and I know how much that would have broken her heart so I'm honored to be interviewing her today I know it's going to be a soulful one and just want to thank her in advance but also Del for allowing me to do these interviews that I know help so many um hope you enjoy Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Really well. Really well. I'm so happy you're here because I've been thinking of you continuously throughout this period of time. Um, and, you know, we're going to hear some news, aren't we, later on? Um, and I think we already know, but I think it must be a strategy that they're releasing it all so that it's not a shock when yes. they actually say it all. But it looks like we've got um, a lockdown of some sorts um, coming into play later on. Um, tell me, though, how before we get into business and things like that, and, you know, speaking to founders and amazing founders like yourself, it's been a bit of a soul-searching experience, hasn't it? Hasn't it? I mean, I'm wondering how you found it personally. Uh, the actual lockdown. The whole, uh, this whole bloody experience, which, you know, we, we thought was going to go on for months. And now we're talking, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about a year before we know it. Well, I think, um, yeah, I think it's brought soul searching for everyone. And I think um, in lots of ways, I mean, I always feel like this with my pregnancies. You know, I've had three of them. And each time it was a kind of pause button where it allowed you to really kind of think about where you're going. Were you happy with the direction you're going? Do you need to reevaluate? Um, which I always think is so important in life. And I think actually yeah. women particularly are really good at always reevaluating where they're going and whether they're happy. I think it's kind of inbuilt in us. Um, and, um, and I think, yeah, I mean, you know, ups and downs, kind of a lot of, you know, there's the suffering that's going on out there. I find sometimes it's really overwhelming. I particularly, I think, because of the kids being at school age, kept thinking about the three million yeah. children under, you know, in, living in poverty who didn't go to school, didn't get fed properly, and God knows what situations they're living in. I found that really hard to deal with, actually, if I'm honest. I kept finding it kind of well, trying to sink me. And then you have to kind of just get on, don't you? You have to kind of think that's no good. You still have to keep living and fighting another day, and, and you can only do the best you can. I loved your post. Um, on Amazing Ruth, um, mm. yeah, because I love that quote of hers, because, you know, you can only change the small things, it's the small steps every day that make those powerful changes. And I feel that, I feel that so strongly with life and, and you know, with Oaxaca too, you know, we took the time that we were shut to really look at all our sourcing and we've got this incredible new chicken farmer who um, has a chicken farm in Devon and he's working with his next door farmer to try and feed his chicken uh, a first UK born soy. They're doing, um, they're doing experiments in the field at the moment so that the chickens we put on our menus will in no way contribute to rainforest destruction over in you know, the Amazon. Because I things like that, you know, the, the, the global the meltdown that's going on. And the, the fact it all links back to the food chain, and so much of it is linked to the food we all eat. Um, and then as a restaurateur, I feel like what an amazing thing we can do yeah. as a restaurant group to shout about this to, to, to our customers, to say, guys, the chicken you're eating here has in no way eaten any yeah. soy that's, grown, that's destroyed any of the Amazon. And it will maybe make people think when they're buying chickens in other places to ask, well, what's that chicken being fed on? Um, maybe I don't need to eat this chicken. Maybe I can eat vegetables today. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, we're really trying hard with that. 
nearly 50% of our street food menu is now vegetarian. But I'm talking about delicious vegetarian, you know, like yeah. food that we've tried so hard to work on and, and, and made really, really yummy and delicious. We all went to Mexico just before lockdown in February. We took about 18 of us and we all went round and we just got so inspired by such a miraculous country, which actually is so sustainable. The, um, the really ancient kind of peasant diet in Mexico is really sustainable, one that's kind of high in beans and pulses and corn and, you know, pumpkin seeds pounded up to make protein in your diet and moles. And so it's kind of that side of it feels quite inspiring and exciting for me. I, I just love that. I, I love this because, it, it, as you said, during your pregnancies, during the, 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 this period to pause, this period to think about things. Before we go more into what you've learned and how you're progressing, I do know, though, you've had to, you know, I've been thinking about your industry generally. And again, what's going to happen if, if, if we keep, you know, spiraling, I suppose. But you've had to close some restaurants um, in this period of time. You've made that call. I can only imagine how tough as a founder yeah. that was absolutely no. devastating all we do as founders is the from the second we wake up is keeping our businesses alive you know yeah. that's our sort of mother natureness in us and then to have to have made that decision to shut some of your restaurants tell me about that process and how you got to those decisions and and how it's faring on you at the moment well basically we had to look we just had to look at um a lot of it was looking at our rents because rents yes. in this country, um, particularly in capitals, had got to such an unsustainable level. Crazy and I think, level. And I think, I think one thing that will come out of this is that there will be a whole restructuring of how rents are done because it's not just restaurants. You know, near me, there are no toy shops open anymore. They've all been shut down. Yeah. The bicycle shops are being shut down. And I just feel high streets are really important. It's, it's really important to build community. I think with lockdown, we've seen how important it is to keep a local community in these small kind mm. of centers. So I think it's really important that we try and nurture um, community life wherever we are. Um, but then, you know, but we had to really look at, um, at, you know, we basically started lockdown with, with millions in the bank and then we've got you know basically we realized we had would have nothing left um and and so we had to do something and we had to look really carefully at where landlords were being flexible and working with us and where landlords were going absolutely you know there's no way we're backing down and where we thought we'd actually either make money or or just lose it just throw away cash which in the end would pull the whole business down with us. Um, and it was about protecting jobs more than anything. It was, you know, we had to try and protect as many jobs yeah. as possible, which meant we had to make some really tough decisions. And it was so hard. I mean, I, you know, my staff are used to me weeping because I, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite emotional as a person. Um, but God, when we had to tell the news, it was just so horrendous. And, you know, we have got some people in some of our sites, like the guys in Liverpool, three of them went off and got our kind of fist um, uh, with a taco, like kind of logo tattooed on their arms three days after we told them we were shutting their restaurant. I mean, it was just, you know, and we've, it's been, it's been, it's been humbling. It's been awful. And it's been inspiring to see how our guys have like worked together. And, you know, we try to, you know, we try to save all our managers jobs. And I think we have actually as much as possible. We try to help people find new yeah. jobs. Um, but it's, you know, it is really tough out there. And, and it's going to get tougher. I think once this furloughing scheme yeah. comes to an end, we're going to see a lot more unemployment. And of course, it's not just our direct restaurants. Our, our, the restaurant industry yeah. supports, you know, four million jobs in this country. It's one of it's the biggest employer, I think, um, and we are supporting a kind of forty-eight billion pound eco econ economy. So it is. It's 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 these are really we have a massive impact on. Um, on the and what economy. and what do you think? I mean, firstly, can I just say, found to fact, I'm just deeply sorry for you, and I'm so sorry because I was just saying to Frank just before I said. And he was saying, please send my love to her. And, and he just said, we were just saying how all we do is work for this not to happen. This wasn't on our watch. You know, this wasn't something we can control. And we're so used to being able to, aren't we, as founders, sacrificing God knows what in order for the better good. And sometimes these things just get pulled out of your hands and you've got to make the toughest decisions as the boss, 
This is what all part and parcel of having your own business. You've got to make the worst decisions and tell human beings that they're losing their jobs. And, and so my, my heart and soul goes out to you, but tell me what you think now, this industry. So, you know, you, you've gone and tackled the fact that some landlords were just digging their heels in, weren't being flexible. The fact we were in a pandemic, you were a good client, et cetera, et cetera. They weren't having any of it. What do you think has to happen in the future for hospitality, for community? You know, is it about the business rates? Is it about the landlords? You know, I, I always bang on about the high street. And the point is, is that it's run by councils. Councils then have to deal with multitudes of landlords. No one owns big sections of anything. So you're always talking on an individual level. You know, so if you want to save a town or bring toy shops or bicycle shops back, there is no, um, that really feels that there's not much anyone can do. You know, it's just for landlords to charge what they want to charge, unless that the councils start to say, no, we need to have X percentage of independently owned businesses here or what what's your view because i feel like we're going to talk a lot and i don't really know what the walking is yet well i think i think i think one thing that has to work is there's got to be a level playing field because companies like amazon pay so little taxes and it's just and amazon you know as far as i've read what do they do for community how do they look after their staff? You know, we've all read the story yeah. of, about how they treat their staff. And I, I, I'm afraid, you know, every time we buy something there, we're endorsing that behavior, we're endorsing how they treat people, and we're endorsing the shutting down of the high streets. And I know it's convenient, and I know it's brilliant, and it's cheap and all that. But I think, um, you know, like anything, we, we put our money where our mouths are with how we spend our money. And I think we have huge you know we have huge power the consumer has so much power actually with how we spend our money and i think um you know i look for alternatives because i i really want to know that you know like blackwells is a great online bookstore so i i'm trying to use them and because i because i can't help feeling that the consumer has more power than we think but then i also think the governments have to globally work out how the, the the kind of multinational internet companies do pay more taxes because it can't just be left to the small independent retailers to do that because then they will all go under and then they, we will have no high streets and we'll regret that. You know, the old people have been in the, in the news a lot about being suffering from this virus more than that and how lonely they are. And, you know, for them, for, for all of us, for when we're in our old age, we want to be able to potter to the shops and buy from the independent guy who supports the local farmer, who's looking after the land and regenerating the soil and looking after biodiversity. You know, the, the, when you look at the local, that's when you're most seeing a care for the planet and a care for the community and care for each other. It's much easier on the local level to look after each other, I think. I, I, I totally agree. And, you know, the other thing is, is that, you know, it just shows you when we're going to be told potentially that we can't see now other households and, you know, in our homes and we're staying inside more and more. And someone once said that, you know, sort of our homes are becoming the churches of the past. You know, we are being caught at home. So actually, if we want our communities to survive, if we just want somewhere to go that is local. Now, more people, you know, my shop in St. Margaret's busier than ever because yeah. more people are working from home. But it's going to take, as you said, that shift, voting with your money for the kind of world we want to live in and not allowing our time-starved lifestyles to just dictate this sort of frivolous spending you know it, it, it it's so important that we do it and and that you know for old people but for also the young that they know what a butcher is that they know that if they're scared on a bus they can run into the local coffee shop and someone will look after them you know it isn't that what it's all about if we lose our communities in our high street we're asleep at the wheel and then don't you agree Thomas? there's never any going back it's- once those high streets are gone they're gone forever I know, and it's, it's terrifying. You know, even our local library now, the opening hours have been shrunk from kind of 10.30 to 2.30. And I think, what about those working mothers who are carrying like two or three jobs, who have so little spare time, 
and they're the ones their kids are the ones who need those books more than anyone right because we need to like we need to shrink that gap between the rich and the poor we need to shrink those gaps of education and and nutrition and health that we've all know so much about particularly after covid and how are we going to do that when working mums can't even get into the library to get books for their kids so yeah the high street i think is so important so important i've got a few comments thomasina um uh, we G Gen Z, um, when I was at uni, I looked into this 12 years ago at how the rainforest is cut down for soya beans to feed chickens. It's amazing what you are doing. And it really, really is. Philly and friends, community over convenience. Yes. Absolutely. We can wait. We can we, wait. We can wait. We can wait. We need to retrain, rewire. Um, everyone is agreeing with everything that you're saying. I've got a question. How do you think we can support local restaurants and bars if we can't afford to go out for every meal? What would you like to see local communities doing for Oaxaca? Um, so I think, so there are several things. Um, I mean, supporting the people who work in the restaurant industry there's an amazing charity called hospitality action um who i am trying to support in fact i've got to write down on my list of things to do i'm going to write down recipes for hospitality and action that's on my list of things to do today because they're <laughs> doing a cookbook um but also do you know what i think the other unsung heroes of 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 this time have been the farmers and i think people do not think about the farmers in the way that we think about our nurses and doctors the farmers grow the food that keep us alive. It is really hard to grow food. Anyone who's got a window box or, you know, raised beds, or, you know, it takes quite a lot of work to, 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 to grow food. They, have, they, they, they live on very, very little money. Their incomes are really low. They've got a really high suicide rate. They have huge kind of um, amounts of loneliness in, in that kind of whole sector. And yet these people are tirelessly out in those fields, day in, day out, very little kind of holiday and rest producing the food that keeps us alive so i think if you you know of course we can't all go and eat in restaurants all the time but we can buy more locally we can go to our farmers markets which yep. aren't as expensive as everyone thinks you know that idea that that's so expensive and beyond my reach if you go and buy seasonal veg and lots of them in season it's a much cheaper way to eat and um and, and i think that is such a great way to support kind of because because your money will do so much good and also support the environment biodiversity creatures animals you know the world so i think for, for me that is such an important thing buying it's, a bit more locally what a great shout out and what a great education for us all because i think you're right i, I you know the amount that we've heard about certain sectors, not saying that they shouldn't have been mentioned, but we we haven't been speaking about the farming industry, have we? What, no. Whatsoever. I mean, it's yeah. been a silence. Tell me, what do you think um, small businesses, now you've had, for instance, your experience, what do you think um, generally small businesses can do? I mean, a lot of small businesses are having a great run at things at the moment. Yeah. But my, and I think it will be the biggest small business Christmas ever. But I do worry about the fickleness of people, humans, that, you know, how long does it change us, take us to change a habit? So yeah. when you think about your experience, what's some advice that you might now give a small business because of your experience you know when you think of expanding when you think about financial control is there anything that you think oh that is something that i've really learned during this period of time well i think um you know stretching back to lots of the, our difficulties in the past um you know the nora outbreak we had that was beyond our control and, and lots of other things i think the one thing we have realized that it always rings true is you create values when you open any business. You create values to which you want to lead your business and run it to, to, to what you believe in. And you create those values and you talk to your staff about them and they become the kind of framework, the kind of the heart that, that governs everything you do and why you get up in the morning and what drives you. Because I think most of us business owners, we, we don't get up in the morning to make money. No. We, get up in mon we, we get up in the morning to do what we love doing. And you know, when, when it comes to Oaxaca, we love great food we love putting on people and all that so with those values we just keep coming back to them 
any small company, if, if you stick to those values and keep communicating them, you're governed. Every single difficult decision, you go back to your values and it guides you and it tells you how to respond and how to behave. So that's one really crucial thing that if you're small and nimble, you can keep doing and then communicating with your customers. You know, all through lockdown, mm -hmm. yeah. we were cooking and talking to our customers. You're and brilliant, you're brilliant. Fun. But you know, it's important because that differentiates you from, um, you know, because yeah. we're, we're still independent. We're, we're the same owners as we've always been. So although we've got 19 restaurants, we are actually independent. We're not governed by kind of money men somewhere far off. And I think if you can, if you act, small with a heart and follow your beliefs then it, that, that shines through and customers see that customers aren't stupid customers yeah. are never stupid and 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 i think um you know i'm very optimistic in the end that customers will want to kind of you know shop where they believe in particularly now particularly now and you know who knows thomas maybe this really is going to stick are we seeing a new order of of things you know our our dinosaurs are dying on the high street which i don't think is a bad thing necessarily you know and uh, is it going to pave way to an independent high street is it going to pave way to us actually voting with our money and actually seeing founders like yourself and being there cooking for us through lockdown and you know you cannot buy that that emotional connection you cannot buy it you can't fake a founder you can't fake this whole thing. It's, it's what's maybe going to shine through. I've got a few more comments for you. Copper top cards. Well said about farmers. They work so, so, so hard. JB Art Prints by Joanna. At Boris Johnson UK, you need to listen to this interview and start, start acting on it now. Okay, team, tag Boris in. I doubt he's busy right now. Hudson McDowell. Um, it's time like these that we should learn um, that organized foods, um, uh, learn to organize our foods and understand what benefits our health. Remember, medicine costs too. Um, and I just wanted to say, when you've, when you've um, gone through this, so for Holly & Co, we, you know, 48 hours we launched SME SOS, I've never felt more connected to my community. It is the best and the, well, it's the worst thing that's happened to all of us, but it's the best thing that has happened to me, for my community, for us to connect. Would you say that this has been something that you felt as well? Because I know there's such love for Oaxaca. I know there's such love for you that actually it's times like these, you know, our lowest points where we realize you know, what a brand does mean to other people. Yeah, no, I think, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a bit of, um, I've just found this is my rucksack that I've got here. I bicycle everywhere, that's my rucksack. And um, and I'm just started reading this book, which is um, by Glennon Doyle, um, which is called Untamed. Okay, because um, it's backwards for us. So you yes. just need to say what it is. It's, it's, called, un it's, it's called Untamed and it's by Glennon Doyle. And I think um, over lockdown, I definitely spent quite a lot of time reading books that really dug into, you know, what is the meaning of life? What, why are we continuing? How do we live the best lives we can? Just because I felt it was such a period of introspection and, and, and trying to improve. And, and a lot of her philosophy, I'm only reading it, I'm kind of, but it is about tr trying to keep questioning, trying to keep feeling, living, you know, not being afraid mm -hmm. of the pain, living through the pain and mm -hmm. getting out the other side and then coming together. And, and I think that coming together and helping, you know, the restaurant industry, we fed so many, you know, NHS workers, local communities, um, you know, chefs and schools, the charity that I'm a trustee of. Yes. We you know we, we, we produced 220,000 meals over lockdown. For me, that coming together was amazing. But, but as you say, how do we keep hold of that? You know, um, Marcus, um, the footballer, because I'm not into football, he's done no. such a great job. Rashford on... on on talking about these children who can't afford to eat because someone there, the festive edit, I think said, you know, farmers markets aren't available to all. You're absolutely right. There are areas in cities all over this country where they've got absolutely no access to markets of fresh fruit and veg, 
we need to change that we need to get better food on everyone's plates not just mm. the people who can afford it but mm. especially the people who can't afford it who are the ones who are you know suffering from uh, diabetes more and diet related mm. health issues mm. which kills more people worldwide now diet related issues than smoking or alcohol so food is killing us worldwide and that's what's so nuts so we do have to do something about it because isn't that crazy that in this 21st century the food that we eat is killing us more than alcohol or, or booze i mean or cigarettes i mean i just not. i actually can't believe that and thomas you know, this is the issue isn't it because you know it's once when i found out that the bread that we eat in our supermarkets are basically you it's a it's appalling to even call it bread because what it does to our insides when it's proving in our stomachs to um how our normal milk um that we all buy and how uh, milk what how the cows are treated and all of these sorts of things and yet we don't find out about it you know it doesn't seem to be you know you talk about these levels of people and dying of covid at the moment etc cetera, etc cetera. you know sometimes i want to have a list of what else is killing everybody out there because i would like to know you know as you said drinking smoking food you know these are things that we can actually do something about and i i feel like sometimes we're not getting all of the, sometimes i don't feel like we're getting all the information at all um is there any great sites that you know of that if so people are interested in what we're talking about here that they can read up on food generally. So there is an incredible podcast which I am addicted to, and it's called Farmerama. And, what a great um, name! Yeah, it's a great name, and you can find it on most of the podcast sites. And it is it is absolutely riveting, especially what you said on bread. So they won two awards recently on a group of podcasts they called Cereal about the flowery mill about how it's reared, how it, what it's sprayed with, you know, how it's kind of manufactured. And it is absolutely riveting. And I think it does change your perception because if you know all the, all the stories and all the secrets, you do start eating differently. Totally. Because you think, you think, I don't want to put that in my body. That's, yeah. that's, that's killing people. That's yeah. bad for us. That's covering, you know. And there are alternatives. And, and we need to fight for our liberty. We cannot yeah. be you know, told by huge multinationals who are only driven by profit what to eat and what's good for us. We have to have, you know, we have to fight for our own. We, we really do. And I was chatting to Guy um, from Riverford and we, in, and again, if anyone's listening here, Conversation and Inspiration, do listen to Guy's podcast because it was absolutely unbelievable about this. And, you know, and these are the changes we can make. Ever since I found out about bread, we started stocking the bread in our shop. Even though we didn't make any money, I couldn't handle the fact that I now knew this about bread. So now Frank bakes all of our bread at home. Um, if When I found out about milk, if you buy a Holly & Co coffee, we only use milk reared by happy cows from a lovely thing. And we absorbed the cost. So we didn't even pass that on to the customers. We absorb the cost and we have a golden cow above our station that says, all the milk you'll drink is from happy cows. Yeah, and maybe. unless we do educate ourselves or business owners make that change or parents make that change for our children, it's so difficult, but we've got to. So we're going we're gonna to all listen to that podcast. I've got lots of comments coming in. Positivity London. I love Oaxaca. Such great food. What tea do they drink in Mexico? Uh, so the Mexicans aren't wild on tea, to be, to be honest. They don't. I mean, they do kind of mint teas and, and hibiscus teas, but, but it's not a massive, it's such a hot country. I mean, agua frescas are more, you know, hot drink in a hot country. It's, it's not a massive tea drinking nation. It's not a no massive tea. Cakes by Christina um, Beerwood. Loved seeing Thomasina at Conversations of Inspiration Live. Have been going through her cookbooks loads recently, which she kindly signed for me. Oh, you did so much signing that day. The Thoughtful Potter, Liz Earl, has a great podcast for learning about food and well-being. Great th thing, Deborah. Thanks for that. Flora's at number nine. Such an awesome interview. I've learned loads. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, I've just got a couple of more questions for you. Um, lots of people are losing their jobs now, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to, as we said, we've already, I think it's like a 700,000 number. And then that's not even beginning with furloughing stopping because I can yeah. only imagine what that number will be. Now, you found your passion, didn't you, in food. 
I'm not saying later on in life, but it wasn't your f first career choice. No. And one of the things that I'm really so encouraging people to, you know, not only go for their dreams, but be not being held back by whatever stage that they're finding themselves at. You know, what, what would you say when you're, and I'm sure you're doing a lot of this with your own people who've left, uh, lost jobs or helping them out or lots of budding entrepreneurs out there. What advice are you giving them for going for it? You know, and, and do you believe in the idea of having a side hustle? Because I think a lot of people have experienced lockdown who potentially say, you know what, I want to be more at home. Potentially I'm going to be brought back. But in the future, I want to start something. What, what would you say about this whole area of people going for it? I think it's so important to follow your dreams if you can make it work for you. And I think, um, I think you know, all of us have our own special kind of calling in life. We've all got skills and, and maybe lockdown has helped people nurture those skills and yeah. then kind of bring them out. I think it's so tough to lose one's job and it, you know it's caught up with your self-esteem and you know you can get caught in depression and blues and all that but I think if you can just realize that life is a struggle for everyone getting up every day you know it, it living a life you know there was a wonderful quote by Elizabeth um you know the amazing actress married to Richard Burton um uh and I'm, so you can't ask me things like this. This is because I can't do things like this. Anyway, Elizabeth, anyway, anyway, Elizabeth. Oh my god! I know her. Come on, community. We all know this. You're so married to Richard up. Burton. Wonderful. Married to Richard Burton. Come on, the jewels. Helena, like, not Helena. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Taylor exactly. She Your was like this thing. <laughs> yes. Hey, thank you. Thank you. There we are. Everyone's got it. Elizabeth Taylor of just like, you know, putting your best face on every morning, no matter how you feel and getting out and facing that day and working at, you know, whatever your interests are, research them, look into it. Are there gaps in the market? What are people buying? Because I feel now more than ever, there are opportunities because people are yes. in their communities more. They are more switched on to different ideas. You know, social media, it's got its negatives, but it's a great way to re reach people at very little cost. I think this is a great time for budding, budding entrepreneurs. And often in recessions, it's, it's the best place and the time to start a business, as, as you probably know. So I think, um, I think there are great opportunities out there but it's going to be tough and having that faith and the belief in yourself. You've just it, got to keep, you know, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Um, the maths mum, when I lived in Mexico, they used to say I ate my dinner like a dog, all mixed up. They eat everything separately. Is that right? Um, I don't think that, is that right? I don't think so. I mean, I've got my taco, I've got my salsas. I'm yes, not, I, yes, you've got, well, maths mum, you're going to have to elaborate. Um, Colour celebrations. Ladies, you're inspiring. This has been such an amazing and informative session. Thank you so much. Um, when you think about food and drink industry, so do you feel that there is opportunity? So what do you feel about how um, Deliveroo and these sort of businesses are doing? And do you think that there is opportunity in the hospitality industry yourself so when you think of Oaxaca and you think about the future you know we had didn't we we you know we had a sort of a classic not classic formula but there was there was already people ahead of ourselves ahead of yourselves doing things so you might have followed in their footsteps has this given you any pivoty moments that you've thought you know what why why have we done it this way we're going to try this or or do you are you still steadying the ship at the moment no, I mean, I definitely think people are cooking more at home. Yeah. Which for me is, is great because as an eco warrior, I think it's probably more sustainable. You can eat, it's cheaper for people. Um, it gives you pleasure to prepare your own food. It gives you that thing of like taking a moment and, and being able to look after yourself because I think we all owe ourselves to be able to, you know, spend time nurturing ourselves and yeah. making time and space for that. Um, but I think, you know, for food companies now, there's that real possibility to help people to produce really delicious food. And it not, not just delivery. There are lots of delivery services now that cater for the independent sector as well. Delivery, obviously, is the largest one. Um, but also, I was talking to a cook the other day who's cooked in fantastic restaurants all over the world. She's kind of in her late 40s, let's say. And she's come to a bit of an impasse. And I was just looking at Instagram over lockdown yeah. and seeing all those 
incredible, very short menus in my local area that I could just order from. Really delicious home cooked food. Um, so like a cook, but on a much smaller scale. Yeah. So I think, I think there are opportunities. And by the way, you're talking about um, uh, Riverford. Guy is such a hero of mine and we stock quite a lot of Riverford stuff on our menus. Do and you? I, and, and I love the fact that I was talking about Riverford for so long and my staff for ages were like, I don't get it. Why is organic important? Isn't that just for the rich? Whereas now people are realizing, yeah, if you look after the soil, you look after the creatures, you're looking after mankind, you're looking, it's got healthier food. And, and the fact that more and more veg boxes are being bought now than ever before, and that's something that's happened through lockdown, I think, again, is really encouraging. Um, and I think we are shopping differently. And I think there are lots of opportunities in there for food businesses of, of how people are shopping and consuming absolutely there are and and i think that we are all you know the amount of veg boxes that arrive in my home you know and we're cooking we're experimenting more all these sorts of things um before um you go and i'm i'm conscious that there are announcements out there um i'd love just to know for you personally you've been through the roller coaster you're still enduring it we still are about to hear the announcement what are you going to take away so far in this adventure, I suppose, that we've had, in this journey that we've had? Well, I think, I think more than anything, I want there to be more reason when we talk about this horrific virus that has been deadly. But then if you look back in history, there have been many other viruses and we have not taken such extreme actions. And I would just beg that we look at the cost of being too draconian with our measures because we yes we have to protect our vulnerable absolutely foremost and fundamentally but we also have to protect all the other vulnerable and i'm talking about you know i keep thinking about those three million children and more now living under the poverty line because they're going to be more redundancies and we have to measure everything because there are lots of people dying of cancer every day there are lots of people dying of all sorts of things and we have to take this into a whole big picture, I think. And just focusing on the deaths of one virus every day, all it does is instill fear and panic in people. I don't think that's that helpful. Um, so I think we have to take more of a holistic view whilst also protecting the vulnerable in every measure that we can. So I think, yeah, I, th I, I think- agree more. Yeah, moderation. Moderation, we need to, we, 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 you know, if we're gonna be living with this for a while, as you just said, we need to hear all the numbers, not just one set of numbers continuously. And as you said, it's all the vulnerable, but it's also the fact that we could deal with our children for X amount of time. But, you know, just their mental health, the average child out there, you know, is this going to be a year of them not being able, you know, my, I, I heard recently a little girl that I know well wasn't allowed to bring back her spelling book to show her mum her spelling bee that she got 10 out of 10 and they weren't letting her take a little book home. Now this is just, this is now the world, but we, you know, so I do think, I couldn't agree with you more. We've, we've got to have some measures in here. Um, and thank you, Thomasina. I'm going to summarize you now and make you blush. So okay, I'll I love you... your earrings. Can I just say, oh, I love your earrings. Thank you. I'm going to buy you a pair and I'm going to send them to you. You are literally everyone from the day you stepped on that stage, recorded that podcast, firmly in the Holly & Co family. You're just one of our most favourite human beings. And, and I'm really sorry you've just been through the shit. And I think what, who you are, your brand, your spirit is just awesome. And it's um, massive inspiration to me, Thomasina, really. And yeah, massive, massive love, love, love for you. So keep strong, won't you? And um, I'm sending you a big, big kiss. But I'm going to let you go now so that I'm going to summarise you and uh, okay. say I love you even more. <laughs> okay, all right, bye. Thank you, bye. Isn't she remarkable? Do we all need to go and find out more about our food? Yes, this is a huge yes. We're gonna all listen to that podcast, The Power of Community. We cannot lose the high street. We've got to start shopping small. We've got to take this seriously. Do we stop buying from Amazon? Full stop in our households. Imagine if you did that for a month. What would happen? Could you find an alternative? You know, how do you survive the future? When we asked Glorious Thomasina that question, values, even if you're small, values go on the bottom of the to-do list. I know that for a fact. 
Get those values right up there. How many founders during SME SOS have told us all that when the shit hit the fan and they needed help, it was the brands with values that they latched onto. And that is so important. You're gonna need that glue. And so if you don't invest in your values, if you don't write them down, start to lift them, start to understand what the DNA of your business is and communication. So many people have told us about communication, but Thomasine is right to bring that art. Follow your heart, follow your beliefs, get on Instagram lives. Even if you only have a few people following you, it does not matter. You're trying to communicate. You're trying to get your soul and your heart across. And more opportunities, Thomasina said, than for budding entrepreneurs than ever. Food industry. Think about this. We're all caring about what we eat more and more. What opportunity is there for this? And people are shopping in a different way. Thomasina mentions chefs in the local area. You know, cooking and only being able to supply the local area. I've been trying to get Frank, if he's listening, I've been trying to get him to do that forever. Um, and don't let recession stop you. You know, I built not in the high street in a recession. I'm building Holly & Co in a recession. A recession makes you agile. Um, it makes you strong. It, you know, feeds you on Popeye spinach. You know, that's what you get strong because you can't fuck around. You can't waste any money. You've got to get to the heart of things that move the dial. Um, so a recession is actually one of those key ingredients for your business. Who would have thought? Um, thank you, everybody. Um, positivity, you asked. My business is struggling. Do you have any specific advice about keeping calm and carrying on? You know, I think sometimes we need to fall in love with our business and we need to understand why we're doing this in the first place. And sometimes we can get caught on the guinea pig sort of hoop and we just keep doing the same thing. We need to realize sometimes we've got to rip it up. We've got to understand what we want to keep and what things need to go. Maybe throw in that wild card I talk about. What is the wild thing that you could do that could just spark interest? Change things up. Do the opposite to what you normally would do. Obviously within your brand guidelines, but that's my advice. Is it exciting enough? Have you created traction? Have you done something that surprises people? How do you get someone's attention and wake people up? This is so important. Think about the melody of your business. I was just talking to the team and briefing them about their melody. You know, we have peaks and troughs. How many peaks are you planning? And what are those peaks? Because you can't just plan it a week in advance. You know, we're planning January's peaks, December's, November's. What are those things that I'm gonna to bring to you that I hope you'll find interesting? But we've had to be planning this for a while. It's not too late, just get cracking. Think about your roller coaster. Think about being wild. Think about being surprising. Do not be afraid of ripping it up, throwing something away, because you get to make those decisions. Um, Boris is on at the moment, so we, we better go and look at what he's saying. Um, you know that we will keep you updated, always on stories to any breaking news. SME SOS doesn't go anywhere, um, just like anything. We're, we're still here. Thank you, Del, for letting me speak to Thomasina. Thank you, community, for being the best freaking community that ever was. Um, and my, what a, what a journey we're all having. I love being with you all. Lots of love. <laughs>